Hi, Vinyl Community. It's Maria. Um, I've been wanting to... So my last video, I was showing all my new, new acquisitions, and I decided that would take about three videos. So before I do part two and part three, I decided to sneak a sneak a video in that I didn't really prepare as much for, but I just thought it would be fun. It's the uh, My Guilty Pleasure video. I, um, it's, I, I've, I have a lot of extra time now because I have COVID, so I've, I'm quarantining. It's been about three or four days. I, I've been sleeping probably 16 hours a day for the first two or three days. Now I'm sleeping about 12 hours, so I'm well rested and I'm like, hey, as long as I have this time, I'm going to sneak this, this guilty pleasure video in. So I'm going to start out with one of my favorite guilty pleasures. It's Plastic Bertrand, Sa Plan Pour Moi. And I, uh, this, this album, when I put it on, I just want to dance all over the house. It's, um, he sings some in French, he sings some in English, and, um, and I, I blare it, and, you know, if people outside hear it and think, I can't believe she's listening to Plastic, uh, Plastic Bertrand, well, I am, and I'm enjoying it. Um, I wanted to add something. This is the second video where uh, it's coming across as, as a mirror image, and I can't figure out how to undo that. I took it to an eye repair it place and the woman figured out how to undo it. So I was all ready for this video and it's still doing it. And my brother's in town to uh, help take care of me. And you know, my dad has COVID too. So my brother's here taking care of us. He couldn't figure out how to undo it. So anybody, anybody just tell me, how do I undo this mirror image? because obviously if I'm showing things, it's not, it's not as cool, but yeah, but this album is cool and, and so much fun. So definitely a guilty pleasure for me. Came out in 77 and, um, just love, I love every song on the album. So, uh, another guilty pleasure, Brannigan 2, Laura Brannigan's second album came out in 83 um solitaire was the big hit off this song or off this album and then when i realized oh and then squeeze box by pete townsend of the who she covered that there's another uh oh of course how am i supposed to live without you and um oh solitaire was actually originally recorded in French. So she's done a lot of cover songs. Um, I know when she did Gloria, I don't know, I, I had always heard it in Spanish, so I don't know if it was originally, I think it was originally in Spanish when she did Gloria, which I think is off Brannigan 1. But yeah, guilty pleasure. I don't, I don't go around telling people I listen to Laura Brannigan, although I do. Um, the uh, self-control, that that's one of the songs, and that's not on here either, but you know, she, she's obviously very talented. I didn't realize that um, she passed away um, a few years ago, uh, peacefully in her sleep. I didn't even know she, I, I think it was an aneurysm, so just snuck up on her. So, guilty pleasure. I absolutely adore the Sound of Music soundtrack. I have the DVD uh, when I was in Salzburg. I, I uh, took a um, Sound of Music tour and we went to see all the sides. Um, and it was me, I was 23 and pretty much everyone else on the tour was, I guess, my age now. So in my opinion, there was a lot of old fogies. But um, on the way back, they cranked the, the soundtrack to Sound of Music and we were all singing at the top of our lungs. Really fun tour. Um, of course, I love the Maria, you know, how do you solve a problem like Maria? I'm, I'm in a very fortunate 
position where I have a name that there are probably at least 50 Maria songs out there. And I guess, uh, you know, how do you solve a problem like Maria probably resonates most with me. Um, and uh, I still, you know, you know, I have it on DVD. I watch it. I know every lyric. Very guilty pleasure for me. Um, seventh grade, I bought Styx. Kilroy was here. And I know there's, there we go. Kilroy was here. So, you know, it's a concept album. It had um, Mr. Roboto. Uh, and uh, in the lyrics, uh, that part, the Domo Arigato Mr. Roboto, is listed also in Japanese, which is really cool. Um, but what really prompted me to buy this record in 1983 was the song Don't Let It End. What Can I Do? Pictures of You Still Make Me Cry. That in seventh grade just like tugged at me and I had never even, you know, been in love. So that like, I, I just love that. So guilty pleasure followed up by a not so guilty pleasure, Come Sail Away. This is, this is one of my favorite songs of all time. Um, it, and, and I always loved, uh, you know, on the, you can sail away in a boat. You can sail away in a spaceship. The uh, the intro with the piano, I love. Tried to play by ear when I was seven years old. This is the first song I ever called a radio station to request. My neighbors, uh, we called 96 Rock in Atlanta. We waited. We waited until my neighbor said, you know, my, my parents have the 45 across the street. So we just crossed the street and listened to it. So I never actually heard them play it. Although it was the first song I called a radio station to request. So not a guilty pleasure at all. This song rocks. I really love the way it was used in Freaks and Geeks. Uh, when, um, no, I can't remember the young man's name. He's, he's, leading the girl out to the dance floor. It's during the slow part of the song. So he's sort of feeling confident. And then the song rocks out and he's like a deer in the headlights. He, 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 and then eventually he relaxes and, and everyone's dancing. I think that's how that episode ended. So yeah, not guilty pleasure on the, on the part of Come Sail Away at all. Um, so, I think I've mentioned in other videos that I have all six Van Halen albums because I, I, I did I don't listen to Van Hagar, so I have all six. So in '85, when uh, David Lee Roth came out with "Crazy from the Heat," which was also the name of his autobiography, which I've read, uh, this is an EP, and these were all covers and um, you know California Girls uh, uh, and Just a Gigolo, and this was. Um, this was the first out or EP that I ever was listening to. And my mom leaned her head in and said, is that just a gigolo? And, and, and uh, I think that's when I realized I knew California girls was a cover, but uh, when, when I realized, Oh my gosh, my mom knows this song and, uh, and you know, coconut Grove is on here, easy street. And I've watched uh, Louis Prima's uh, uh, on YouTube. I've watched Louis Prima do just a gigolo. And, you know, Dave, David Lee Roth has impeccable taste as far as these covers that he did. And uh, this was right after he left Van Halen. As a matter of fact, when I bought it, it was still up in the air. You know, is he still part of Van Halen? Uh, but, you know, I bought it because I just wanted to hear what uh what he was doing um and in reference to california girls perfect segue another guilty pleasure um scott mckenzie if you're going to san francisco be sure to wear some flowers in your hair this came out just in time for the summer of love i think it was also used to promote the monterey pop festival john phillips wrote the song and if I'm not mistaken, I think he was such good friends with Scott McKenzie. Wait, did, maybe, 
did John Phillips name Mackenzie Phillips after Scott McKenzie? I think Scott McKenzie took the stage name Scott McKenzie because he liked Mackenzie Phillips. Anyway, uh, it's all very, you know, uh, John Phillips related. And, um, and the first time, like when I moved to the Bay Area, when I moved to Oakland, first time I went into San Francisco, I picked some, I found some tiny flower just to put in my hair, just so I could, you know, say that I wore flowers in my hair when I went to San Francisco. So that's another guilty pleasure. Um, now these, this is something that a lot of people, you're not, I don't know. This is something I love. Flock of Seagulls. Well, first of all, I love this album cover because it's, and I hate this glare. Uh, I love this album cover because like the table the TV is sitting on is also water coming up on the beach. Um, and I love this album because Space Age Love Song is on it as well as I Ran. But Space Age Love Song to me is, is has to be one of my favorite songs. The picture of the band on the back, Mike Score had not started wearing his his very famous uh, haircut that, you know, is always referenced when anything about the 80s is referenced. Um, love, love this album so much that I bought the next album. And this is the one that has uh, Wishing, if I had a photograph of you, and Mike Score uh does have the famous haircut right there and i liked it so much you know i bought this one and i don't think i listened to this one that much story of a young heart and um yeah but these are these are my guilty pleasures flock of seagulls um and then you know every so often handles messiah you know, it, it, it makes this atheist heart swell with joy when I hear the, the chorus, when it's just absolutely gorgeous to me and uh, something else that I can play loudly and, and it really lifts my spirits. But I probably, when people ask me, oh, what do you listen to? I probably wouldn't be jumping to say, oh, a flock of seagulls and Handel's Messiah. Um, now this this is really cool so i really enjoyed the movie footloose and of course the uh the soundtrack's great um i even though i don't like love songs slow love songs i love almost paradise of course i love uh footloose um oh uh holding out for a hero uh, stuff like that. Now, what, what's really cool about this, I found this in a dumpster. I was living in an apartment building and um, I went out to the dumpster, opened it up and, you know, on top of the bagged trash was this and the soundtrack to The Big Chill. So these are two highly regarded soundtracks I saw laying on top of trash. I reached in, I brought them out. You know, I did clean them, but they were not dirty. This would, be, would have been around 95. I think people were just like, I don't want these albums anymore. And they just tossed them. So I got two absolutely incredible soundtracks, just uh, picking them up out of a dumpster so very very proud that i was able to get that for for zero for no money um okay now the next oh and footloose of course came out in what was it 84 i'm thinking yeah and and kevin bacon and sarah jessica parker there's so many great people in this movie so my my next guilty pleasures these three are my guilty pleasures because uh, when you listen to them, it, it, it's, it, it reminds me of the days when we used to have free speech. Uh, Eddie Murphy, comedian. This isn't even Eddie Murphy raw. This is Eddie Murphy, comedian. And, you know, a lot of the stuff he says, I mean, even the first, the first side one, there's like one word that I can't, um, I can't say aloud. Um, 
oh, here's something, you know, he, he has uh, the fart game, you know, politics, racism, the mo modern women, but like, you know, stuff he's saying would, would really trigger people. So it's a guilty pleasure to listen to this, to listen to Richard Pryor. Is it something, is it something I said? Yeah, he uses the N word every other word. So this is like, and, but it's funny as hell. And you know what? I can laugh at myself. I can laugh at myself when Eddie makes jokes. Um, it, it, and so, yeah, this, and then the other one of the comedy albums, Flip, well, Flip Wilson, The Devil Made Me Buy This Dress. And this came out around 70, I think. Uh, and this was uh, one of the first times he presented Geraldine, Gerald, Geraldine Jones. So yeah, these are guilty pleasures because, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be putting this on uh, when just anyone comes to my house because you, you don't know about people. They, people get triggered so easily these days. Um, I realize, I think I'm a closet Daryl Hall and John Oates fan because I've got these, I've got uh, Say It Isn't So and Kiss on kiss on my list and i love to listen to stuff like that this one oh you make my dreams come true and this one uh out of touch i really enjoyed this i love the art out of touch and the b side was um cold dark and yesterday so when I saw how many of these Hall and Oates 45s I had, I thought I must be a closet Hall and Oates fan because I I don't remember buying that many. I don't I don't have one LP by them, but I've I've got some of their hits. Um, Guilty pleasure, probably just for nostalgia, is uh, Pyromania. I loved the song Photograph. Um, I love rock, rock till you drop, rock of ages. Um, let's see, uh, foolin', and uh, you know this. I I keep asking myself if this, you know, if this came out now, which obviously it wouldn't. You know, would I be that into it? And I realize I I love it because I I feel like I'm 13. You know, the age when I bought it. I I feel like I'm 13 when I listen to it. So you know guilty pleasure, turn up my Def Leppard. Um, and you know, that was, you know, uh, Joe Elliott was, uh, still work. He was working on his mullet. It was just starting, but he hadn't gotten that like really long mullet of the mid eighties. So they were all, you know, had all the hair. Um, and, uh, speaking of hair, I really love this. Robbie Neville, Say la vie. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I bought the cassette. It's long gone, but that song "Say la vie" is um, it's I really enjoy it. Uh, the video w was just uh, it was just a beautiful video, and um, I really you know I I'm hard pressed to name any other. What's it to you? Yeah, I can name like one other song off that cassette, but Say La Vie, like I'll still listen to it and, and get pleasure out of it. So there's that. Um, uh, Hair again, Sean Cassidy, to Do Run Run. This song, I didn't realize how many times it had been covered, but it had originally, um, oh God, it had originally been covered by, was it The Crystals, I think? And, uh, but the first time I ever heard it was when I was seven, when in 1977, when this came out. And, you know, it's like, oh, he's playing uh, one of the Hardy Boys. And, uh, and and now he's got to do Run Run. So, you know, I had to get to do Run Run. And um, I still enjoy listening to that. And another, another band that a lot of people don't cop to listening to as much. Um, I really love Boy George. Um, Kissing to be Clever. I love the song Time, Clock in My Heart. 
um, do you really want to hurt me? Uh, I'll tumble for you. Uh, it's, it's just this absolutely, I love it. I love it. And I enjoyed it so much. I bought Color by Numbers when it came out, and um, it had. This is one with Karma Chameleon. This was a big seller. Karma Chameleon. Uh, it's a miracle. Uh, uh, Church of the Poison Mind. Miss Me Blind. A uh, really great album. I, I, I love Boy George so much I even read his autobiography, which is which is pretty good because uh, he really gives you an honest look at heroin addiction. And the ironic part, when he was when he was doing all this stuff and making all this money, he said backstage he was more than likely, you know, braiding his wigs. He wasn't doing drugs. It wasn't until the album sales slacked off that he started doing drugs. So, um, and, and led to huge problems, obviously, but my special connection, you know, like I bought color by numbers in eighth grade and I thought, you know, maybe I should try to like experiment with some makeup, but I didn't, I don't know how to put on makeup. I still don't. Sometimes I have to go on YouTube to look at tutorials. Um, so what I did, I use this beautiful face to say, okay, so this is how you apply uh, um, eyeshadow because it was, it's sort of layered in there. So I thank George for that, for helping me figure out, you know, to, to be a model for me on how to put makeup on. So uh, he, he always has a very uh, uh, soft place in my heart, sweet is that the word sweet place? It's late. It's, it's 1 30 AM and I've, I've slept most of the day and I'm a little weak. Last few ones. I love this night ranger album. Not only does it have, um, you can still rock in America, uh, sister Christian, but I've always loved when you close your eyes, do you, do you dream about me? Uh, and it's, it's an interesting cover. There's a lot, lot of people doing a bunch of interesting, I don't know it's, if it's supposed to be a city street and you've got all these, there's a football player, there's an astronaut. Well, and Sister Christian, it, it will always remind me of, you know, I'm, it's the end of eighth grade. I'm about to graduate. I remember the video. Uh, the piano, uh, and I'm probably going to learn it on the piano because I love learning um, a lot of 80s stuff on the piano, like, you know, uh, Hard to Say I'm Sorry by Chicago, or um, what was the other one I was learning? Um, oh, uh, I Can't Fight This Feeling. So yeah, I think, I think Sister Christian's on my list to learn on the piano. And um, oh, and now this, this shouldn't be a guilty pleasure. Belinda Carlisle, the Go-Go's rocked. I am one of the biggest fans of the Go-Go's. Um, but this song, Mad About You, was very poppy, very just like so sweet, so sugary, sweet, and poppy. And it was on the radio all the time. So this is my guilty pleasure because I would much rather hear Belinda fronting the Go-Go's, doing, doing stuff where they're rocking out. Um, but this was so darn catchy. And the video, like, she was so beautiful. You cannot even take your eyes off of her. She's so gorgeous. And, um, and you know, props to her. She, she had an incredible solo career. So, uh, but yeah, this is sort of a guilty pleasure because I really feel like, you know, the Go-Go's did stuff that was more my, uh, you know, up to my taste, but I, I do listen to that. Now the last, I'll just end it with, you know, guilty pleasures. There are times I will listen to uh, the best cha-cha-cha of the fabulous 50s. Um, I might want to hear a madrigal, the King Singer's madrigal, madrigal history tour. There might be a time 
Dixieland Jazz, Jimmy, Jimmy McPartland and his Dixielanders, that happy Dixieland Jazz. You know, I might put that on. New Orleans Ragtime Orchestra. You know, this is, is this, well, it doesn't say much there, but this, so, and none of these should be guilty pleasure. It's more that, you know, someone asks you, what music do you listen to? Um, maybe I should say, hey, I listen to Dixieland Jazz. Hey, I listen to Ragtime. Um, I like Hall and Oates, believe it or not. Uh, so yeah, guilty pleasures. Uh, I'm glad I did this video, but um, like I said, the whole mirroring thing, I don't know how to undo the mirror thing. And obviously when I hold up albums and they're reversed, that's not really pleasant for the viewer. So in the comments, could someone tell me, because I'm the most, I'm the most techno technologically challenged person in the world. And um, so please help me with that. And um, I will be back to finish my new records that I need to show you. I've done volume one, I've got two and three. Maybe I can combine it into two, into just one more. Cause yeah, there's so much new stuff that I wanna show you. And uh, so thanks for watching. Bye.